So I just left the Seattle Police Department's current North Precinct. I just got home and I'm just going to kind of go through my thoughts and um, give you a quick overview of what went down. So um, we were met at the door. It was a group of journalists, a couple of advocates. This was put together by Shama Swant uh, to look at the current precinct since the cops are asking for $150 million to build the most expensive precinct in the country because this current precinct, they say, needs to be... Um, is outdated, too small, prevents them from doing their job. So the building from the outside, it it's fairly small. It, fit, it blends in well with the environment, actually, because it's pretty low down to the ground. There's trees around it. The first thing that we were shown when we walked in was the right gear. And they pulled out um, a bag of right gear and said, this is what every cop has. And it was in response, they said, to WTL, which to me I found uh, funny in a sad way because, you know, the police response to WTO was actually noted in the Justice Department's record, report finding systemic abuse in the police station as an example of police abuse. Um, so they brought this out with the justification that this was in response to WTO where they had used excessive force and then spent a fair amount of time talking about how they don't have enough storage for their riot gear in the current building and how it's taking up all this extra space. So the, you know, the very first justification used for a new building is the f that they don't have enough space for their riot gear. Uh, from there, we went uh, and did a tour of the offices. <laughs> they were showing how some lieutenants were forced to share an office. Uh, these are large offices, trust me. Like, these are large enough to fit maybe three or four officers, but it's two lieutenants to an office. And then they were showing the cubicles and saying that um, sometimes officers are sharing cubicles and they're forced to move their stuff around to fit uh, things um, at desks if when shifts are ending and then another shift is starting up. What was interesting to me the whole time is that while we were on this tour, there, were hard, there was hardly anyone in the precinct. So this overcrowding was mostly stuff and not people. It was really about storage and, and, and not that there's too many officers. Uh, most of the cubicles were empty. Um, the lobby was completely empty. There were only two people there, I think, the entire time that we were given this hour-long tour of the police station. Um, and then we were taken out to see the new vehicles. Uh, they were explaining that the uh, they had detainee comfort in mind when they bought a whole new fleet of vehicles for cops. Um, because I'm sure the first thing that you're going to complain about when you're arrested is how uncomfortable uh, the back of a cop car is. Um, and I'm sure, you know, plush seats are important when you've got handcuffs cutting into your wrists. Then we were taken downstairs to show the firing range. And that was, it was really kind of actually traumatic to be taken to a place where cops learn how to better shoot people of color and people in distress and people uh, with mental illness and to see them use the need for a better firing range as a justification for taxpayer money. That was really tough. Um, to see all these spent bullets that, on the ground that they didn't even clear out before bringing us in there. That was really difficult. And it was funny because they kept talking about how this was part of a community outreach to make these areas accessible and I don't think they, they're so disconnected that I don't think they realized the impact that would have on people who often fear of being a target of those guns to be walked through the place where cops learn how to kill people and be told that they need a better facility to make them better at doing that. So that was, that was tough. Um, and then we were taken to the gym. Uh, and this is this is kind of entertaining because, you know, we were taken to this huge gym that takes up most of the basement. And looking around, and there's these 
you know, signs on the walls that basically show that they've already decided this new precinct is a given, saying how they're saving up to buy new equipment for the new gym that's going to be in the new building. But then I realized there's a sign that said, this gym is for paid members only. And I realized this isn't even a work gym. This is an optional gym that the cops have built themselves and even charge membership for. So all of this talk about needing storage space, um, and their entire basement is an optional gym, and they could just get, you know, a 24-hour fitness membership like the rest of us and store all of their riot gear down there. So that was interesting because it wasn't really addressed as to, you know, why you've got bikes overflowing everywhere, equipment overflowing everywhere, but you've got this huge, space, spacious, cleanly, uh, clean gym with, you know, all this great equipment, um, and you have room for that. Then we were taken up to the meeting room, and we were talking to someone who works in the finance with the CLPD, talking about why this new precinct is important. And the first thing he said was, it's important to help them, help the Seattle PD connect with the community and build better community uh, relationship. And I asked, because the hypocrisy of it all kind of I mean, it was overwhelming why we would open up with a discussion of how you need a building to better hold your riot care. And then in the same meeting, try and say that you need this building to better connect with your community. And I asked how you could how you can use one as a justification and then use the other and expect people to buy that. And the answer was really hedging. It wasn't even really an answer. Um, I was told, yes, we understand that there's a lot of symbolism with riot gear, um, but cops need to stay safe. And basically that having a new building with a community meeting space is better than nothing, as if people are just going to flock to a heavily militarized building that is specifically being built to hold military equipment that frightens and oppresses and harms the community. Um, it, you know, it wasn't really addressed. We left the building... And then Ansel at The Stranger uh, brought up the locker room and we were given a brief tour of the locker room and we weren't allowed to take any pictures in the locker room. So we weren't able to, you know, document with photos. But there were multiple stickers on lockers that were highly offensive and derogatory. Uh, There was a sticker of a bend over Obama sticker. Once there was a Calvin and Hobbes sticker with Calvin peeing on Obama. These things are incredibly offensive and contribute highly to a culture that is hostile towards people of color. And so all of this discussion is is the police representatives are telling us that they need this new building to help them improve the culture, that they, they need it for better training and they need it to be able to watch the officers and do all this stuff to help them bring it into what they kept calling 21st century policing. Uh, they haven't been able to remove offensive stickers off the lockers for free. And there's multiple things wrong with this. First of all, they knew they were giving a tour to journalists. They knew that there were likely going to be people of color in this tour, and they never thought, hey, maybe we should take down these highly offensive images before we give this tour. Um, I think that speaks more to the culture and the goals, and also how far we can really trust this police department to handle improving the culture uh, when they haven't been able to do something as simple as saying, hey, um, open disrespect with derogatory images of the first black president of this country is not acceptable in a workplace, especially when we're trying to battle a culture that routinely treats people of color as less than, right? Uh, that's, that's a conversation you can have for free with your staff that they didn't even think to even hide the fact that they're not addressing. So, you know, that's one problem. And and I asked that. I said, you know, how how is a new building going to fix your culture when you haven't even addressed something as simple as these images in your locker room? And I was told, finally, what we already knew, that a new building isn't going to, quote unquote, fix everything. Here's the thing. A police department that gets a new building with the support of the community asks for funding to train their 
employees, does the work in the community, asks for funding to help the community before they ask for a new building, right? They do the work they can be doing now before they say, now give us a nice shiny facility. A police department committed to the community does this work regardless. You don't need a new building to address a culture of racism and corruption and abuse, right? You don't get, you don't need money for that. I managed to live on my meager salary and not abuse people and they can do the same. And it was incredibly frustrating. I think it underscored to me that our police are not to be trusted with this amount of money, that it will not bring any fundamental change to how our police treat our disenfranchised populations, how they treat the homeless, how they treat people in mental crisis, how they treat people of color. Um, None of this money will address that because issues as simple as fixing the type of bullshit that goes on in your locker room isn't currently being addressed, there's nothing that $150 million is going to fix unless that comes with salaries for an entirely new police department that doesn't do this bullshit. So, yeah, it's a shitty building. It could probably use some upgrades. Maybe they could get rid of their gym and store some stuff down there. But my greatest fear with the cops is not that I'm going to be held in a shitty-looking facility. My greatest fear is that I'm going to die before I even reach the police station. And do not be fooled. This money will not make the people of Seattle any safer. So those are my thoughts. Uh, If you have any questions, let me know.